Hey, what's going on everyone? Today I'm going to show you how to install your own domain certificate into the PRTG network monitoring server. So to begin with, I just want to show you that there are no SSL certificates installed on this server. The connection is not secure. And of course the problem with that is anybody that's doing any kind of reconnaissance on the network, they can capture that username along with their password. Now PRTG does give you this option to switch to SSL, which will still encrypt the connection. It will generate a self-signed certificate, will be, which will be imported into your web browser. But it's not going to be your own domain certificate. And in some cases, some web browsers such as Chrome will still not trust the certificate. So we're going to fix this. Here's some of the tools that I'm going to be working with. Of course, I have PRTG installed on this Windows Server 2012 machine where um, I have the role of Active Directory Certificate Authority installed, which is going to be issuing certificates from certificate sign requests. I also have OpenSSL installed on this Linux box, where I'll be creating private keys, certificate sign requests, and modifying the OpenSSL configuration file. And then if you go in, um, type into your search engine, uh, PRTG Certificate Importer, Go ahead and click on this link, scroll all the way down, and download the certificate importer. It downloads as a zip file, so once you extract that, there'll be an executable in there, uh, PRTG certificate importer. You can click on that, and it launches this wizard right here. And what this is essentially going to allow us to do is import certificates into PRG very quickly and very easily. Okay, so I'm going to go over to my machine where I have OpenSSL installed. And here's where I'm going to be doing the bulk of the work. Create a directory called CA. And in this directory, I'll create some subdirectories, one for certificate sign requests and the other for private keys. I'm then going to modify the OpenSSL configuration file using nano. Scroll all the way down where it says rec underscore extensions, and we're going to uncomment this line. The reason why we're going to uncomment this line is because we want to actually include something in the certificate. Scroll down a little bit further where it says v3 underscore rec, which is right here. And in this section, we're actually going to add this line to the file, uh, subject, alt, name. And that is going to be equal to alt underscore names. And the reason why I'm adding this here is because I want all of my web browsers to trust the certificate or trust the site. And one of the requirements that Google Chrome has is that the certificate has a have a, a subject alternative name within it. And so you can include anything in here in your subject, subject alternative name, such as the fully qualified domain name, the IP address of that server as well. So, or all the IP addresses that represent that server. So the loopback, and then also the unicast address, and then also the URI, which will be HTTPS, followed by your fully qualified domain name, followed by welcome.htm. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save that. And generate the private key using the gen RSA tool. We're going to specify three values. The encryption, I'll select AES-256. I'm going to specify the output file. I'll put that in the directory root CA private and call this file PRTG private key. 
And then the third thing will be the modulus length, which I'll say as 2048 bits. You need to enter in your password for the key. It's going to ask for it twice. And if we want to look at that key, we can use the cat command. And here is our key. Okay. Now we're going to generate our certificate sign request using the rec tool, show for request, and new for new request. And we'll use using the key that we just created, which is in root CA privates and then PRTG private key. And we'll go ahead and output that to the directory uh, root CA certificate sign request and call this file PRTG certificate sign request dot pem. It's going to ask for the password that you use when creating the private key. And here it's going to ask you for all your um, identity information. So you can just go ahead and follow the on-screen prompts. All the information that's going to be included in your certificate. Country name, states, city, uh, organization name, organizational units, and then fully qualified domain name. The email address, okay, and once you have that filled out, you can just hit enter the rest of the way through. Okay, and there's a certificate sign request. I'm going to go ahead and transfer the uh, private key over to my server. And now I'm going to copy the certificate sign request. Open up IIS. And drill down to search server. I'm going to browse on port 80. That opens up Active Directory Certificate Services, where we're going to request our certificate, advanced certificate, and go ahead and paste that certificate sign request into where it says base64 encoded certificate request. Because this is a web server, we're going to select the web server template, click Submit, click on the radio button base64 encoding and download the certificate. Here you can see it's been downloaded. I also want to download the um, root certificate, so I'm going to click back, where it says download CA certificate. I'm going to download in that base64 encoding. There's the root certificate. I'm going to open up that identity certificate. And here in the subject alternative, or subject field, sorry, uh, you can see all the information that I included in the certificate sign request. And then there's all the information that I included in the subject alternative names. I'm going to go ahead and rename this certificate. Here's the root certificate. I'm going to be using this for a later purpose. It's essentially a self-signed certificate um, issued by my CA to my CA. Just go ahead and call this MS12 roots. And I'm going to open up the certificate importer. Click on the radio button, provide a directory. And search for that certificate, that PRTG certificate. Click OK, click Next. Because the private key was essentially in the same um, directory as the, uh, as the identity certificate, uh, the program is smart enough to recognize that and pick that up right away. It asks you for the password that you used when creating the private key. And the verification of the certificate was successful. Click Finish. Do you want to restart the server now? I'm going to say yes and click OK. I'm going to open up the PRTG administration tool. Okay. 
and here you want to make sure that the secure HTTP server is um, the radio button is selected and all the IP addresses that represent this server are selected as well. Go ahead and save, close, click OK. This is going to take a moment to, um, to restart. So now while that's restarting, I'm going to go ahead and take that certificate, uh, that root certificate, and put it in my share. And I'm going to import that certificate into this machine right here. Okay. All right. So in order for the Firefox web browser to um, to trust that PRTG server, we have to import the root certificate. So I'll click on Privacy and Settings. Scroll all the way down to View Certificates. We're going to say Import. Go to my share and import that root certificate. Go ahead and check the box trust this CA to identify the websites and click OK. Click OK. And now I should be able to browse to that uh, site. So ns12.section.local and welcome.htm. OK. So you can see now that the uh, connection is secure. We want to look at that certificate. We can see that those are the contents of um, that I included within the uh, certificate sign request. And there are the contents of the subject alternative name. OK. I also want to make sure that um, Chrome is trusting the certificate as well. And you can see that there were no warning messages. And we have the lock right here. The certificate is valid. OK. So that pretty much does it for installing certificates into the uh, PRTG server. I hope this has been helpful. Have a good day.